What's good everybody, it's your boy Dino and we back with another video with some crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. Just a heads up, if you're sensitive to animal welfare stories, this story isn't great. Earlier this morning, we got news from northern Japan that there is a group of 10 to 17 killer whales stuck in drift ice outside of Rasudo town. The Coast Guard was alerted early in the morning by some fishermen, and somebody was able to get a drone out to get this footage, which is two kilometers out in this drift ice. The Coast Guard isn't equipped with ice-breaking vessels that are able to make it out that far, so at the moment, there is not a current rescue attempt beyond hoping that the wind and the currents are able to move a path for them to be able to get out. This instance also isn't the first of its kind. Back in 2005, there was another group of killer whales that was stuck under the ice that sadly didn't make it. Now, the only thing I've found on this story right now is there's one news story that you can find in the link in my bio, specifically on Instagram. I'll have all that information. And if I find any more information, I'll be putting it up specifically on there. Now, while stories like this mobilize us to want to help as much as we can, orcas that are on the other side of the world, two kilometers out in ice, there are not only orcas in my waters around British Columbia, but ecologies around you that need help. And so mm. look to some of your local organizations if you can. If you take this as you want to help, that is the greatest thing you can possibly do at the moment. Like I said, my name is The Orca Man. I will give you as many updates as I can. And take care of your local ecology. Well, that sucks. So that was like 10, 15, maybe more. I wonder why they can't just like swim under the ice to get out. I wonder. I'm confused by that. Now this man's a definition of woke. We got into the habit of buying junk fast foods that have no actual food in them. We buy gallons of poisonous household cleaners when one degradable soft soap will do. We are poisoning our homes and wasting our hard-earned money for no good reason. Why? They just want you to buy stuff. If you don't want food with chemicals or GMOs in it, then don't buy it. The minute we start taking responsibility and spending our money wisely, every politician, every corporation and leader around the world is going to know that we have woken up. The last people I would trust with my health is big pharma and big government yep. because neither one of those strike me as caring entities. They're, They're all about profit. profit. Exactly. They're all about profit. And what does the government actually do to help them? When a superpower with all this military might attacks, just unprovoked attacks, mm -hmm. uh, like, like, you know, Iraq, uh, sorry, Afghan, I'm, I'm sorry, Viet, <laughs> Korea, no, sorry, Ukraine. Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> drug cartels in the world get together and buy up all the media and all the politicians and force all the people in the world to stay locked in their homes and people can only come out if they take the cartels drugs and keep taking them over and over i threw the script away i mean who is gonna believe that crazy idea being forced to do drugs i do that voluntarily all day long Yeah, that's some ridiculous stuff right there, man. Um, I like Woody Harrelson quite a bit. A major storm is barreling towards California right now. LA is prepped to get three to six inches of rain tomorrow alone. Some of the freeways and roads will be closed due to flooding. As you can see, the pier is full and packed but this will be completely empty starting about 9 to 10 o'clock tonight. L.A. just may be shutting down for the entire day on Sunday, moving into Monday. Will this affect the Grammys? Maybe. I don't know. People from uh, California, let me know how that atmospheric river is treating y'all because, like, I can't find any... Um, like video footage of what's going on there currently. Bro is possessed by a zesty demon. Speak, why you? <laughs> Who are you? I am from Nikki Persuasion. Uh, Speak out, what happened to him? I am just trying. How did you destroy him? I am him. Since he was a child, 
how many demonic powers you have. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire all over your body. Fire all over your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So I believe in God, but um, <laughs> that seemed like a movie scene or something, man. Music uh, has pulled all of its artists off of TikTok. So if you go on TikTok right now and you try to put on a Harry Styles song or a Taylor Swift song or the Weekend song, you cannot because of a disagreement between Universal and TikTok oh. over compensation and other things. So Universal says that TikTok has failed to reach a deal for them that it provides appropriate compensation for artists and songwriters while also protecting human artists from the harmful effects of AI. TikTok hitting back, meanwhile, says Universal is greedy and not protecting its artists and songwriters. Hmm. It is a big old mess right here. I hmm. That's why they just like pulled all their music. Hmm. Did open, y'all. I don't know if y'all saw that. A man was working in the woods when he hears this. User Denfisk uploads frequent videos where he's out working somewhere in the Sweden woods operating logging machinery. But one night, as he arrives to work during the early hours of the morning, he begins preparing a machine for the day by changing the saw machine and decides to record himself doing so. Yet, little did he know, something horrifying will be captured as well. The man hears the horrifying screams of something in the woods. As he makes his way inside the machine for his own safety, just what exactly is living in the Sweden woods that could possibly make such a haunting sound? Let me know what you think. Um, that was a wolf alerting other wolves that there was somebody there and yeah he's gonna need to get in the machine and just go ahead and flip off most of the lights and hang out for about four and a half hours before they go away been there done that rap community have come out and said that this is just blatant cultural appropriation racism because they're accusing all their music that they produce of being about selling drugs pushing guns stripper poles what do you say to that criticism i think that there's you know there's all types of rappers out there there's there's black rappers and white rappers and asian rappers and Indian right. rappers all types of rappers and i don't think that uh criticizing sort of the status quo of the genre or criticizing the prevalent content of the music i don't i don't i don't agree that there's anything racist about because that. it's not uh, i mean 15 years there's been uh, very prevalent themes in hip-hop you know objectifying women glorifying violence and hip-hop likes to think of itself as quite a woke genre none of those things seem to quite align with what the the woke mob is standing up and being vocal again i think it, it, it's a little bit hypocritical but yeah i i agree with tom i don't see anything inherently racist or even remotely racist about <laughs> that song with Ben Shapiro was it a really good song N no but uh was it offensive no ah uh, bro their faces
<laughs> yeah, that's weird. Like, if you look in the middle, it makes their faces look crazy, man. One of them looked like Beavis. <laughs> otherwise known as augmented reality is going to revolutionize society and most likely replace the iPhone. According to Grandview research, the projected market is supposed to go up about 40% in the next eight years. Yeah. According to this graphic trend line, it appears to be compounding exponentially. This exponential curvature right here, just like the beginning stages of this exponential curvature also right here. And most importantly, the exponential curvature of this company. Apple CEO Tim Cook said this quote right here. Check it out. The AR headset that is going to revolutionize society is going to be released by Apple um, early as January 2023. This will change the construction industry, the healthcare industry, as well yeah. as the education system and entertainment. But that's just a few of them. Take care, guys. I agree. Um, it did come out and it is really useful. It's super expensive and it's really cool. I've seen some videos of people in self driving cars while using the Apple thing, and like that's gotta be illegal somehow. Filming it. This is on the south end of the range. Can show you the area. Awesome. We go now? All right. Yeah. Let's do it. We've now turned off on the exit towards Dugway, and there is a tension, there's a level of anxiety that you can literally feel as you're coming down this road. If any facility was capable of reverse engineering alien spacecraft, it's Dugway Proving Ground. During World War II, this mysterious base conducted secret chemical weapons tests and developed experimental aircraft. It does remind me a lot of Area 51 because you get too close to Area 51 and you violated the boundary that turned you over to the sheriff to be arrested. Out here toward the fence line is where they do a lot of the testing. You're, you're going to be able to make it. Is this a spot? This is a spot. This is amazing. Dave has led Ben 50 miles southwest of Toole, Utah. They are now on the south border of Dugway Proving Ground and can legally be shot on site if they cross onto the base. Oh man. This is the exact location where we've seen the beam test. Dust trails with no vehicles. I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. Maybe it's cloaking technology, predator technology. Yep. So if that's true, where are we getting this knowledge and, and this technology? Well, I think that uh, Roswell, the craft from Roswell we, we recovered, has a huge impact on our daily lives. I think that the technology that was recovered from that craft, we use every day now. Mm. Yeah, I kind of speculated that for a while. But then again, like, how do we know, like, anything that is coming out of their mouths is true so yeah they have armies that you can't even fathom they got soldiers that you can't even you wouldn't believe how enormous they are their strengths and abilities are nothing even our best soldiers can go up against but we're not too worried about them because we have our own little secrets of our sleeve you know and there's even different kinds of species you know, just like humans, there's different races. Uh, third world countries have their own. You're getting so swollen on top of the mountain. You can't even comprehend that this is a reality we live in. Before I was working here, I mean, I thought this was just fairy tales and Disney stories, but they, these stories, they all came from somewhere. And once you're exposed to the truth, you'll start noticing these things everywhere. And I mean everywhere. From oceans, to land, to even the cities. It, it's, it's unreal. Oh Jesus, it's like a video game that it has infinite amounts of characters in there. Flat earthers and people that believe in simulation theory. Oh my goodness. Follow to see more. Simulation theory? Uh...
No, yeah, that's cool. I don't know who that guy was, so I can't verify anything he said, but it sounded cool. In Indianapolis, an SUV approaches a red light at an intersection as a pedestrian enters the crosswalk. Runs the red light. It is T-boned by a car coming from the left, sending it hurtling toward the pedestrian, Ooh. missing him by inches, and ultimately landing it on top of another car that is approaching the intersection. In total, six cars are impacted by the crash. According to the driver with the dash cam, no one is seriously injured. So remember, green is go. Red is. Yeah, you get it. The best part of that is the, the white car at the end rolls up with him sitting on the top like, <laughs> what? I'm glad no one got really hurt in that. That's wild. But next year is a number eight year. Number eight deals with karma. Number eight deals with finances, right? Mm -hmm. Number eight deals with those things. So people are going to be getting blessed. It's going to be a lot of blessings next year for people. A lot of people are coming to their own next year. But man, a lot of people who've been hurting people, a lot of people who've been talking crazy, is going to get a lot of karma next year. It's going to be sad, y'all. sad it will mark the next year is going to be the marker y'all mark my words it's going to be the marker y'all so 2024 family is going to be a great year opportunity for people but there were the demons will run rapid next year and a lot of things are going to be exposed in people's lives there's going to be no more room for fake faking and shaking i hope so i really do i really really hope so no more time for that unknowingly setting the stage for a potential face-off with the homeowner and her dog. The woman, recalling the event, describes the terrifying possibility of what might have been. At 2 a.m. under the cover of darkness and amidst heavy snowfall, a hungry mountain lion entered a villa, its gaunt figure visible in the footage. Winter in Texas can be harsh, making food scarce for wildlife. Drawn by the scent of a golden retriever inside, the lion stealthily approached the bedroom door, waiting patiently for an opportunity. The tension escalated as the household began to stir. The residents, unaware of the lurking danger, went about their morning routine. The lion, finding the warmth of the house inviting, oh. dozed off, only to wake to the realization that You're daylight had exposed its presence. In a panic, the lion tried to escape, but the transparent glass windows proved to be an unexpected barrier. While the forest was in sight, the lion couldn't find its way out. The sounds of the waking family heightened its anxiety. The moment the homeowner opened the door, the lion bolted into the hallway and crouched down, unseen by the man. As the woman stepped outside with her dog, they unknowingly passed by the predator. The lion, now in hunting mode, crouched low, ready to pounce. But the sudden scream of the woman, upon noticing the big cat, startled the lion, prompting it to flee. The shaken mm -hmm. homeowner quickly retreated indoors with her pet, likely contemplating the installation of a more secure door to prevent future unwelcome visits from the wild. This incident serves as a reminder of the thin line between urban spaces and the wilderness in some parts of the United States. Poor cat. <laughs> I'm not scared of mountain lions or anything like that. Like, just don't mess with them. Don't, like, definitely don't sit there and stare into their eyes or anything because they take that as, like, a, I don't know, it's like a sign of, like, oh, yeah. 
Um, but anyways, I, I love big cats. Like being from the East Coast going in North, South Carolina, uh, Tennessee, Virginia, all that. Going out there in the mountains and stuff every other summer and everything. Like I love them. Just don't mess with them. They are not your friends. I think we're in the middle of a war right now, and right. I think people don't realize it. I think the fentanyl thing is part of the war. Buying our politicians out is part of the war. TikTok and propaganda thing that's going on is part of the war. Disinformation thing is part of the war. All the bots that are interacting with social media outlets is part of the war. Yeah. The Twitter bots, the Instagram bots, that it fires the population up. It divides us. The big push on the racism, the trans, I think all of that is part of the propaganda. There's a possibility that all of these chemical spills, contaminated water, food processing plants that are catching fire and blowing up, the 18,000 heads of cattle that just blew up. I think they're hitting us from every angle possible, except an actual force on force I would, confrontation. You know my smart ass remark was gonna be, how good is a M1 main battle tank or an F-35 or a four class aircraft carrier to deterring any of those activities that you just said? Mm. Interesting question. Not really sure. Called a bell curve, which looks somehow like this. It's being used in, in describing random events. Bulk of the population today is this intelligent, more or less intelligent biped, all right? And uh, uh, with a vertical spine, and who pushes the buttons on TV and drives a car, etc., etc. Now, there is some back throw. That is, there are some people here in this area, very few people who are still gorilla-like. That is the hairy. They beat their chest when they see their neighbors and a few other things. And then we have other people who are here in this corner, very few of them, who are very highly developed because we say that evolution is now pushing mankind in this direction, away from the gorilla types, towards the very highly evolved people. At this point, we're here. What's going to happen maybe a million years from now, half a million years from now? This curve is going to shift. It's going to shift like this. That is, the bulk of the population will be very, very highly evolved. We have gone away altogether from the gorilla types, no more gorillas. And what we have here now is the average man is now the retarded person uh -huh. in evolutionary terms. The bulk of the population is extremely, very, very highly evolved. And the cutting edge of evolution here, these are very, very highly evolved people. We can't even imagine what kind of what kind of person that will be. He may not have a physical body. At What's the habitat, so to speak, of this group here? Well, you just go out and you find them. They're, they're all over the place. The habitat of this group here, what do you think? What do you think you find these people here? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I suspect you would find them in universities. You'd find the, you know, the people who are very bright, people who are uh, in the leading edge of professions. That kind of thing. <laughs> and it's an intellectual thing. Well, I suggest that you find them in mental hospitals, in nut houses. And the reason for that is that these people, they live in a different reality, in a reality which, which is very changed, and few of them are adapted to live in this reality. So naturally, they can't function very well. Hmm. Man made a lot of good points there. Like... What will it be like in a million years? Will like the average person today be the dumb person then? Like, I mean, if if humanity survives, I would hope so. But like, really, cool cool stuff. The last forty years repeats itself. In twenty sixty three we'll see these prices. A new car will cost about $136,000. The average rent will be about $9,000 a month. The gas price will be about $13 a gallon. An average home will cost about $1.9 million. And the average salary will be about $100,000 a year. Now look, we can laugh about these numbers all we want because they are pretty comical. But unfortunately, we live in a clown world and this might just happen because inflation 
like all other things, unfortunately, compounds. Remember back in 2008 when the world was melting and Ben Bernanke came out with these huge stimulus packages, people criticized him because they thought, oh my God, $500 billion, that's wild. $700 billion, that's insane. And then whenever the lockdowns occurred in 2020 and we printed trillions upon trillions of dollars, they said the same exact thing. They're like, oh my God, that's insane. That's so much money. Well, the next time something happens and they pivot and they print money, how much do you think it's going to be? It's not going to be single digit trillion. It's going to be tens of trillions of dollars. AOC already said she wants to implement a $90 trillion spending initiative on climate. That should give you an idea of how much we are going to inflate this currency away over the course of time. Not only that, but our world is just getting harder. Gas prices are going to go up because simply put, there's not going to be enough gas. Saudi Arabia is already reducing the amount of gas it's selling. Russia has cut off exports entirely. In the US, well, we just don't want to frack for shit here, which is a shame because we really could and our gas would be a lot cheaper. And unfortunately, gas goes into every one of these other things. It goes into how much your car costs. It goes into how much the rent is because you need gas for a lot of things that build a fucking house or at least go in the house. So you see where this is going. If you don't start making and investing money now, you're never going to get rich. And I'm saying this in a position of absolute fear. I am fearful every day that I'm not going to make enough because quite frankly, we don't know how much it's going to take. It might take an ungodly number that none of us are going to be able to reach. And if that's the case, so be it. But we got to try because there's no nobility in throwing in the towel. And I am not trying to be caught in this slavery mess. Yeah, me either, man. Me either. So basically what he's saying is that... Uh... By then, we'll have Grand Theft Auto prices. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto online prices. Noticed it. It's a complete circle. It's got one sun there. Another sun. He blew an O. I'll tell you what you blew. But yeah, isn't that fucked up? What the hell? Come on, sucker. Yeah. Did you get the whole thing in your picture or what? It's too big. But it's a perfect thing. It's too big. What about Plano or something? That's wild, dude. I never seen nothing like that. What is that, y'all? Anybody in the you know comments know? Anybody? Let me know. I'm very curious. That's super cool looking. In the near future, you would never be allowed to drive a car again. For the same reason, 46% of all current jobs will be eliminated by the same thing that is teaching your kids empathy while also exploring distant planets and the depths of our oceans. Today we are talking about the future of robotics. And when it comes to robots, there are going to be a lot of them. From self-driving cars, which is already a $200 billion industry that is expected to rapidly increase over the rest of the decade. And while it might not ban human drivers completely, I do see there being autonomous only roads or highways. Then you'll also have service robots like the one from Tesla or Digit that are meant to help out with chores like cooking, cleaning, mowing the lawn, or caring for the elderly. It's actually rumored that Elon Musk could announce the release date of the Tesla bot by the end of this month. There will also be robots like Atlas or Spot, whose agility and strength can be used in a number of different search and rescue environments that would be too dangerous for humans. You also have construction and warehouse workers like HRP5P, who can be used to fill the record high 4.3 million open positions in the industry, or aquatic transformers like Aquanaut, who are designed for deep sea maintenance, stuntronic robots for entertainment shows and stunt doubles like this one from Disney, customer service robots like Pepper, livery robots 
on the ground like Starship, and in the sky like Matternet's recently approved drone. Companion robots for kids and the elderly, like Moxie, who is meant to help kids socialize and learn empathy, or surgical robots that will allow doctors to complete a surgery from the other side of the planet. So there's going to be quite a few. And while yes, it may eliminate a number of jobs that we have today, it's also going to create a ton of new industries with an equal amount of new jobs. And as always, if you're interested in the future, business, technology, any of that good stuff, I'd appreciate it if you followed along. Thank you. You guys ready for the iRobot times where we have robots at home? Everybody just has a robot and it just does everything for you. You guys ready for that? I don't know, man. I don't know that I can be part of that. If you send your kids to a public school, you don't send them to a public school. You send them to a government school. Look at the government. The government wants to mutilate your child. God wants you to disciple your child. The government has zero children. And I just feel inclined in the spirit to say this. In Ephesians 6, Paul gives this command. Fathers, raise your children. It, it does not say. Our job is not to sire children, but to father them. And if you sire a child and hand them to the government, you are not fathering them. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, this this dimension that's that's close to this one, the astral or the fourth dimension, call this 3D, the third dimension. And in the lower levels of this astral dimension, in other words, the lower frequency levels which are really close to this one, that's the realm of the demonic. That's where demons and their name and description in all different religions and cultures, um, that's where they exist. These are the entities that the Satanists are interacting with in their rituals. Why, why do, uh, do these Satanists, who may be sick, but a lot of them are not stupid, why are they doing these rituals? Because they're interacting with these entities. And when you do rituals as they do, in the same places over and over and over again, what it does is it thins out the frequency difference between the astral, lower astral, where these demons are, and this reality. And so that interaction is made possible. Now, what's happening now is that that lower uh, astral dimension is starting to fuse into ours. And, and, and these demonic entities are much more able to move into our reality and stay for longer. And one of the conduits, hello, that is allowing this to happen, that is the, the, uh, the connection frequency that allows this to happen more now than ever before is what we call 5G with 6G and 7G to come. This 5G, there's so many elements to it. And one of them is that it is acting as a frequency conduit for these demonic entities to come into this realm. So people will start to see them. And what they do is they quote, possess uh, uh, bodies and there's also hybrids which are part demonic and part human. And, and as this uh, goes on, people are seeing more and more of this demonic level and thus they're saying, oh my God, he turned into a reptile, he turned into this, he turned into the other. And we're going to see more and more and more of this. And it's to understand, in the end, that you can talk about Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, and we should. And your Gateses and your Fauci's and all these people, and your Soros's, quite right. But they are gophers. They are vehicles for this demonic realm. Don't ignore David Icke. Don't do it. Go figure out his stuff. Go look into it. Please. It's really cool. Really interesting. Alright, so I got one more for you. Oh! At least you're okay, man. Faulty lighter. All right. And that's another video in the archives, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for stopping through. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever it may be for you. Until next time. Peace.